All right. ACL re-injury. <clears throat> this study was noted by uh, a couple of us today, and it was a, it's a level four study, but it was pretty humbling to see how poorly uh, we may do with some of our uh, return to play, particularly in the NFL. Only 63% of patients returned, uh, athletes returned to, to play in the NFL for a variety of reasons, different uh, subpopulation, but it is concerning. The ACL failure rate is pretty variable across the literature. It can be as low as 2% in some studies and as high as 29% in others. We're starting to learn that these failures are skewed towards young adolescents and especially those with allograft ACLs. <clears throat> so return to play failure, why does this happen? There's a variety of reasons. Perioperative complications are are some reasons. Infection and arthrofibrosis, two uh, very much feared complications. Uh, Tom Brady returned to play after his infection. Um, however, uh, that definitely, when you get an infection or if you get a stiff knee, it definitely diminishes your chances of returning to the same level. Poor surgical technique we know is a common cause of ACL failure. Psychological factors, I'm glad Eric uh, spent a lot of time on that. Uh, we're just uh, beginning to understand that there's a huge psychological component to return to play. And then graft failure and retear. <clears throat> Furthermore, I'll get into contralateral uh, ACL injury. Sam Bradford retore his ACL and we'll see how he does. Hopefully not too well with the Eagles, right James? Uh, we mentioned allograft, uh, but I just wanted to drive that home one more time. Uh, uh, allograft versus autograft. Originally, uh, when I trained, which uh, when I was in my fellowship about 10 years ago, 30% of the cases we did with ACLs were, were allografts. That has changed a lot. Uh, this study was one of the reasons, pro a prospective story, uh, cohort of ACL, uh, ACL injury in West Point cadets with two-year follow-up. And the failure rate, importantly, was measured as the need for revision, not return to play, but these patients actually had to be revised. Uh, and their numbers were pretty alarming. Uh, they had an 11% failure rate for patellar tendon autograft, and a 13% failure rate for hamstring autograft. Those are high numbers. Allograft was very concerning, 44% failure rate. This is level two evidence, good evidence, um, and, and these are big numbers. This is a different population. These are young, active people, but this was pretty eye-opening as to the potential failure rates that we're facing. Keating is part of the Moon study group, which I think we, we mentioned exactly what that is, but the, that's the uh, National Multicenter Orthopedic Outcomes Network, which is prospectively studying ACL injuries and is get, starting to give us a lot of good data. Um, so they studied uh, a, patient age and ACL graft type as predictors of ACL failure. And they did note that uh, allograft carries a four times risk of uh, failure as autograft and that they did state that the youngest, most active patients probably are not good candidates for allograft ACL reconstruction. <clears throat> but in terms of second injury, what's the evidence for second injuries? We do, we are getting good data uh, regarding this question and there is, so there's substantial level two data emerging. Wright sort of started some of this. He was, well, this was one of the first moon reports to come out, and they had two-year follow-up, um, which stated that the risk of re-tear of the graft was, eight, it was 3%, and the risk of a new ACL tear on the contralateral side was 3%. Not good, but not that high a number. Um, however, this was one of the weaker moon studies, even though it's level two. Their follow, although it was prospective, their follow-up was really phone interviews and they weren't examining these patients and they didn't, they didn't get them all to follow up. But as time went on, we, we got more evidence. Shelbourne is out of Indiana and he has a lot of good studies with long-term follow-up on his ACL reconstructions. Uh, he has a, a prospective co cohort here with five-year follow-up, level two evidence, large number of patients, 1,400 patients. 4.3% re-injury rate, not so bad, but 5.3 had a contralateral ACL injury. And then he also uh, sifted through the data and noted that females had a much higher rate of injury of the contralateral healthy knee, almost 8%. Furthermore, these re-injuries were age dependent. So if you were, seven, if you were less than 18 years old, you had a 17% chance of an injury to the graft or a new injury to the contralateral side. 
And if you're 25, that's not that old, right? I mean, most of us are thinking that's pretty young, but your, your, your risk was much less. <clears throat> More recently, Andrew Nord uh, had a, a level two study. This is from the Swedish National Ligament Registry. Uh, and they noted that 3% uh, of their patients required a contralateral ACL reconstruction. Not so bad, but they did note that if the patients were younger than 20, this, in this risk increased by three times. I think this is one of the better studies out there. This is Paterno, uh, AJSM last year. This is out of uh, Children's Hospital in Cincinnati. Uh, they had 78 uh, young patients, average age 17, uh, with uh, 24 months of prospective follow-up. All of these were young people who participated in, piv in pivoting and cutting sports. This was a level two study. <clears throat> Their results were pretty concerning. The control group had an 8.5% primary ACL tear. These were healthy knees that they were following along and 8.5% of them tore their ACL. Even more concerning was the fact that the ACL group had an almost 30% rate of a second injury. 70% actually tore the contralateral knee, 30% retore their uh, operated on knee. Females were more likely to tear their, uh, their contralateral knee than the graft. And then this, second risk, this risk of second injury was calculated as six times greater than controls. This is for both genders. <clears throat> These are very concerning numbers. This was a young, healthy, uh, athletic population. Interesting to note, when did these injuries occur? It occurred uh, at about 215 days after uh, they returned to play, so less than a year after they returned to play. Most of these athletes returned somewhere after six months. So it happened within about uh, a year and a half after the surgery. <clears throat> so overall, what does the evidence tell us a re-injury after an ACL injury, after an ACL reconstruction? Now, there is decent data here, level two or higher, and there's as much as a 30% chance of re-injury, whether it's the ipsilateral or the contralateral knee. This is highest in young, active female athletes, and especially if an allograft is used. <clears throat> Here's the references regarding re-injury. <clears throat> so, in terms of the ACL risk factors, which I lectured on an hour or so ago, I had not included uh, ACL, a prior history of ACL surgery in the non-modifiable risk factors, but that clearly is a risk factor in addition to the jump landing mechanics, female gender, notch width, and ligamentous laxity. <clears throat> so we can identify these people. You guys as, as trainers and therapists can identify some of these uh, uh, patients, and you may be able to encourage people to consider an ACL prevention program, which has shown promise. <clears throat> What about bracing? People ask this question frequently. <clears throat> What's the evidence? Rick Wright uh, performed a systematic review of level one studies um, with good data, and uh, their conclusions were that there's actually no evidence to support the use of functional braces after ACL reconstruction. This is surprising to many, but the data has not supported it. However, if you ask a room full of orthopedic surgeons, do they use braces or not, Many or even most of them might say they do use ACL braces. Dr. Gatt, you use a brace afterwards? I do use a brace, but recently I've, I've, I've had three patients recently and the insurance has absolutely not been great. Wow. I've actually Interesting. So after my ACL, I, had, uh, I did wear a brace for skiing and for basketball for about a year, and it gave me a great deal of comfort. And when I took that off for the first time, I was, I was very nervous. And psychological factors certainly play a role. So uh, I usually don't brace mine, in part because of this study. I don't brace operatively. However, some factors may make you go one way or the other. If a patient has pre-op laxity, uh, or if they're uh, a football lineman and they're at higher risk for a, a contact injury such as a cup block, or if they had a, a, a concomitant uh, MCL injury that was significant uh, before their reconstruction, then, then I would consider uh, a brace. Some would say if the family pushes you hard enough, you probably put a brace on them as well, right? So we talked about ACL injuries and arthritis, and I
touch on that again before I finish. Uh, patients with a history of an ACL tear are thought to have an increased risk of developing osteoarthritis. This was uh, one of the first papers that really talked about this was uh, Daniel's landmark uh, article in the early 90s, Fate of the ACL Injured Patient. But there are questions. What factors contribute to osteoarthritis after an ACL injury? And does ACL reconstruction prevent the onset of osteoarthritis? I think we've, men we've answered some of these already here today, but I'll just go over them again quickly. Newman uh, in Sweden had a prospective cohort uh, of patients with 15-year follow-up of non-operatively treated anterior cruciate ligament injuries. This is an interesting study uh, in terms of how they treated these patients. The average age is six, so a little older than, than a lot of the athletes were dealing with. All underwent an initial arthroscopy, so they did get surgery, but none of them had their ACLs reconstructed. And then they had therapy. Uh, they described it as a neuromuscular physical therapy uh, and, and very strongly encouraged patients to modify their activities, avoid cutting and pivoting sports forever. Um, interesting, sort of goes along with the, uh, the numbers that we often see. 60% of the patients had a meniscus tear at presentation during that initial arthroscopy. Only, 20, only 25 of them went on to have that, at that time, had a meniscectomy. So there were some small tears that were uh, with debridement. <clears throat> How'd they do? So actually, most patients were doing pretty well. They did not have their ACLs reconstructed and they were doing pretty well. 30, nearly a third required additional surgery to address that meniscus. Only 16% had osteoarthritis, which is not, not that bad, but at age 45, that is very concerning because you know that number is only going to go up. <clears throat> They concluded that meniscectomy was a major risk factor for osteoarthritis, whether or not the patient had an ACL reconstruction. A quarter of them eventually underwent ACL reconstruction four years later, uh, presumably for uh, persistent instability. But nearly 70% were asymptomatic. <clears throat> so these, these people are coping. They're changing their, their activities and they're coping. Uh, in addition, patients with non-reconstructed knees and an intact meniscus had the best COOS scores. An additional study in 2010, this is a level one study, this is good data, 50 uh, patients were followed over six years for the development of arthritis after they did have their ACLs reconstructed. They studied the graft choice and the presence of meniscus, meniscus and chondral injuries uh, and how they related to arthritis later on. So their numbers were a little more worrisome, uh, nearly 50% of patients uh, had mild or moderate osteoarthritis. Nobody had severe arthritis, but half of them, only age 33, had some form of arthritis. And this was tibiofemoral tibio arthritis, which is interesting, uh, not so much patellofemoral arthritis. Why is that interesting? I'll get to that in a second. Um, as we know, meniscectomy was a risk factor. Chondral damage, that makes sense, that's a risk factor. Graft choice was a risk factor. That was interesting. Patellar tension appeared to have a higher risk of arthritis than a hamstring autograft. Now why would that be? Well the next line tells us that quad strength and quad hamstring ratio uh, appeared to play a role in arthritis as well. And some studies in the non-ACL population have indicated that a quads hamstring ratio may play a role in the development of general idiopathic osteoarthritis. So if we take the patient's uh, patellar tendon what are we doing to that quads hamstring ratio? We're making it worse, putting them at risk for arthritis. Or if we take their hamstrings, we're actually improving that ratio, decreasing their risk of arthritis. Is that the reason? We don't know, but it is interesting. Despite that, many of us still would choose patellar tendon as our favorite graft. They did say that a delay from injury to surgery trended towards significance, but uh, a long delay, so uh, not great data there. <clears throat> So does ACL surgery alter the natural history of ACL injury? A systematic review, only level three evidence, but this was a, had some, uh, a broad range of data. They had a 14-year follow-up um, and noted that patients who underwent ACL reconstruction had fewer subsequent meniscus injuries, less need for further surgery, better Tejner activity level scores compared to non-operative uh, treatment patients. However, they did not, in, in other activity scores, they didn't note any difference. Uh, and in terms of arthritis, there was no difference. <clears throat>
So what's the bottom line? Patients who have suffered an ACL injury are at increased risk of developing osteoarthritis in that knee. ACL reconstruction does not alter that risk, at least not yet. We're not sure what uh, improving the anatomic position of grafts might do for risk. ACL uh, reconstruction, we believe, protects further meniscus injury. Metastectomy at the time of ACL reconstruction appears to be a risk factor for osteoarthritis, but again, ACL reconstruction has not been proven to prevent osteoarthritis. And these are my references. Thank you very much. <clears> Thank <throat> you.